This video is sponsored by Jerry's Artorama. Jerry's Artorama Online has been serving artists for over 50 years, providing only the best quality art supplies. Jerry's Artorama has premier lines that sell all over the world and are used by millions of artists and professionals worldwide for amazing results. In addition to over 65,000 fine art supplies, choose from over 4,000 free art lessons, oil painting, drawing, acrylics, watercolors, mixed media, and the largest selection of new supplies professionally evaluated and created by artists for artists. Jerry's Artorama has been empowering artists since 1968. We provide reliability, better art supplies, great prices, and exceptional service. The quality of your art matters to us. Hello, everybody. Today, we are doing a studio hangout for artists. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. So Jordan, your portrait is a little familiar. <laughs> I, I would decide I would paint Michael Jackson for absolutely no reason. <laughs> he, he showed up on my Pinterest and I was like, that would be fun to try out. So I started this last night, spent maybe three or four hours on it. And we chose this for the painting today. So that's what's up. So now everybody has to tell us about how old you were when you found out about Michael Jackson, because my 12 year old is very mad at me that I didn't have her in the eighties when he was still alive. <laughs> Sorry. I think, I think I might've been about 10 and I have, I used to have an Afro and I looked like I could have been in the, like the missing member of the Jackson five, honestly. So, <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, there's pictures of it somewhere. <laughs> oh, we need to see that. That should go in the Discord. All right, I'll share in Discord afterwards. Cool. We hope you will work on your own personal art with us in the studio. And afterwards, we will meet in the Discord and post live streams. And we would love to see what all of you are making in the studio. That's one of my favorite things is getting to see what everybody's up to. So if you are in the studio, tell us what you're doing. What are you making? What are you making it for? It's incredible, the range. So Lauren, when did you first hear of Michael Jackson? How old were you? Um, hmm, I was probably 10, I think. It was, it was not, he was not the biggest name in my household. I believe the biggest name was Enya, but Enya, <laughs> Enya. Yeah. my mom, my mom liked Enya, but my mom also liked Michael Jackson. So we listened to a fair amount of Michael Jackson too. Wait, who is Enya? <laughs> you don't know who Enya is? Not until you tell me. Uh, do you know that song, Only Time? I'm not going to sing it. I was going to the next question. <laughs> do, 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 It's like very breathy and airy and I guess it's new agey, isn't it? It's new age. You can't understand anything she's saying, partially because sometimes she's speaking in another language that's Gaelic or something like that. And the other... Okay part because she just doesn't enunciate anything at all and it drives me nuts okay that would that would explain it because i only listen to music that i can understand <laughs> <laughs> you should look up a picture of her i swear that she's got 500 horcruxes she has not aged since what the 80s there was there's enya in the background of my first Christmas of tape recording, my first Christmas. Anya has been around for over 30 years making music. I just looked up, I don't know. Well, Blue Wolf wants to know from you, Lauren, did your mom listen to Basia too? Ooh, I don't think so. My mom didn't really listen to music. It was just Anya. My dad didn't like Anya. So 
I, that, that was, that was the beginning and end of my mom's listening to music experience. She did like Michael Jackson though. She told me that she was really into Michael Jackson when she was a kid. Okay. Now we have to, because we know Jordan's greatest music person <laughs> is Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, who yes. by the way, are my 12 year olds hands down favorite musicians and i really want jordan to come and chill with my 12 year old i think he would get along very well <laughs> so here's the question who is the singer or band or whatever that you can't stand mine okay i know this is going to make people upset ani defranco but i have a good reason yeah. you know why because i had these two horrible roommates one summer in college and they played ani defranco all day and to this day i have like an allergic reaction like if i hear ani defranco i cannot deal that's really funny i was gonna ask oh that has to be you in college that's such a RISD thing yeah of the night what of the 90s the 2000s early 2000s Sentient Charcoal wants to know, Lauren, what medium are these feet in? It's acrylic. I've been doing a lot of oil stuff recently, so, and it's been wearing me out. So I'm just going back to what I know for a little bit, just having some fun. Okay, Jordan, what is the music you cannot stand? We have to know now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I really don't like some of the newer artists like Cardi B or like um, Kodak Black and like some of these people who I'm assuming many had not heard of, but it just, it aggravates me. Every time I hear it, I feel, I feel like pain and torture is <laughs> like, through, you know, it's like pain through sound, you know what I mean? Like dripping faucet kind of stuff. And so, yeah. I'm trying, I'm you don't like, like Cardi B. Yeah, stuff like that, not really, not really for me. I'm trying to think of like older stuff. Um, there was an era where I didn't like Bob Marley for absolutely no, no reason. <laughs> um, because <laughs> it's more personal. Um, there are some people in my life who I didn't particularly like and they only played Bob Marley. And so by proxy, I hated all Bob Marley, reggae, Sean Paul, all that stuff, even though I know it's really good. <laughs> so, yeah. Sean well, Paul, Lauren, uh, huh? What? Slepnir says, oh no, Lauren is defeated again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I'm feeling pretty defeated. Now my feet are on the page. All right, Lauren, who is the musician or band that you cannot deal with? Ooh, ooh. I don't like Bon Jovi. I hate Bon Jovi. Come on! What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm so upset right now. Come on. Really? <laughs> That's so weird. Why, why would you like Bon Jovi? <laughs> How can you not? Living on a prayer? What? I no! No! <laughs> I'm a child of the 80s. I can't help it. Oh, that's what I used to hate 80s music. And it was entirely because of Bon Jovi. I thought everything from the 80s was just ACDC and Bon Jovi. You're wrong. You're so wrong. I'm wrong now. I mean, I found Tears for Fears, but hated it. Crispy Paintbrush says for Jordan... I'm working on a character reference sheet right now in digital. Do you have any tips for doing composition for things like a reference sheet to stop it from looking too flat and boring? Um, to be honest, I never really think about composition when it comes to character sheets. I think character sheets are more for just making it clear what your character is doing. So if you're talking about like a turnaround, just, you know, have, the, you know, the character in front pose, three quarter side, back, whatever. And then if you're doing like more action poses and stuff, just arrange it on the page where everything fits, nothing's overlapping each other, things are being cut off and things like that. Um, but I never, I've literally never considered composition 
to be that big of a deal when it comes to doing something like that, especially if it's for reference. I think it's almost like what I tell people about formatting their resumes, where people try to get all fancy with the graphic design or the font and the app. And I'm like, I just want to read the resume, okay? It, it just, it gets in the way. And I would think with a character sheet, that's sort of similar. Like you just want it clean, clear, easy to read. Do you think that's what it is, Jordan? Yeah, that's that's it. Because when you're making a reference sheet, that's literally what it, it's for reference. It's not um, considered like the stuff you're gonna publish. If you're making a comic book, let's say, then it's purely just for you to know how to be consistent when drawing your character. Same thing applies for animation or anything else. So, um, so yeah, you kind of you you have a lot of freedom, um, and there's plenty of them online if you want to see samples of it too. And really, you want your character design to speak for itself. If there's anything too fancy with the format, it can actually become a big distraction. So yeah, focus on the character design itself. Soyton Lee is asking, Lauren, are you painting those feet from life? Nope. I took a picture of my feet. I was wearing these really ugly socks, but they look like a great painting. I could see myself painting them. So I took a picture of them. I was going to do it from life, but I ended up taking them off because after a week of wearing them, saying, oh, I'm going to work on them a day. I'm going to work on them a day. I, that got a little gross. So I had to give up and, and clean my feet. If anybody wants to see the photos that Lauren is using, I did post them in the Discord in post live streams. It is fun to see what the reference is and how Lauren's going to be doing that. Kendra Moyer says Bon Jovi is terrible, but gets better with nostalgia. <laughs> Everything's better with nostalgia. ACDC is the same song over and over. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's accurate. I would say that's accurate as well. I have no nostalgia because I wasn't born in the 80s. Ken Kana says, love you guys so much. When are you reviewing art portfolios again? You can submit for a free portfolio critique that we can upload to our YouTube channel. So you just need to go to artprof.org, go to the menu bar and click on community. Under community, there is a section that says submit for a free portfolio critique. So go to that page and you'll get information on how to do that. We're not critiquing them live anymore. What we're doing now is uploading them to YouTube, but it's a great opportunity because you can get your work reviewed for free. Well, Lauren, now we need to know, Sentient Charcoal says, the painting makes them look like very comfy, cozy socks. Are they? Oh, they're extremely comfortable. They're made of this high quality, lovely cotton alpaca wool stuff. So they're very soft. Wish I knew the brand. Sam's parents always give me socks. I've got so many pairs of socks, but I never say no, because I really <laughs> like socks. You always need socks. How could you say yeah. no socks? They're yeah, you, that's, that's an adult thing. You fall asleep during movies and you really like getting socks. That's me. <laughs> claim it, Claire, I claim it. <laughs> Own it. Well, Jordan, you got an MJ fan. 1303 Cami says, I'm a basic guy. I see MJ and I click. I like that. <laughs> I love it. Katya is asking, is there a stage session today? Katya is referring to the Discord. We are not doing a stage session today, but Lauren and Jordan will be in post live streams chatting. So you're all welcome to come over to the Discord. And if you are not in the Discord, I am just really disappointed in you because <laughs> where all the cool kids hang out and I was never a cool kid. And now I made my own cool kid hang out and now you all need to join. <laughs> Where we talk about Michael Jackson and Bon Jovi. <laughs> bon Jovi doesn't hold a candle to Michael Jackson. No, oh my God, not at all. It's like apples I, and oranges. I don't, I don't know any Bon Jovi songs, but probably I, I might 
Maybe I don't know them intuitively. Maybe if I heard it, I'd be like, oh, I recognize that, but I wouldn't know it's them. But I still agree. <laughs> you would know <laughs> living fashion. Living on a Prayer is on one of my closet Spotify playlists. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I'm going to gag. No no, 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 no. I have to explain, okay? Different playlists serve different purposes. I have to listen to total trash when I'm on the treadmill. I cannot listen to anything good. It has to be absolute garbage. And he's on that list because it just puts me in the right mood. You just said that you loved him and that he wasn't garbage. Yeah, but it's like... If I could, I would sit down and eat a bucket of Sour Patch Kids. I would feel awful afterwards. But that doesn't mean it doesn't taste good at the time, right? It's like that. Oh, ooh, I would love a Sour Patch Kid right now. <laughs> Anna says, I'm leaving tomorrow for a 10-day trip to Israel. What recommendations do you have for travel art supplies? Oh, that sounds amazing, Anna. I wish I was going. Travel art supplies... It depends on the person. I'm the type, I don't like having a lot of stuff. I'm the type of person, I'll just have a bunch of markers and toss them in with a pad of paper and I'm done. I'm not one of those people who lugs a giant <laughs> suitcase of oil paints. Like I'm super low fuss. What about you, Lauren? I know you've traveled and done work on site. I do the markers too, although I kind of would advise against them or at least using them on the plane because the air pressure really screws with them. And I ruined a new plane by opening a marker and it exploded everywhere. What? <laughs> and this guy next to me and that marker stuff doesn't come off with soap and water and this guy the stranger next to me was just giving me the glare <laughs> it did it get on the plane me. yes it did it got all over that 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 tray the takeout tray and it got on the seat <laughs> lauren so you might not want to take markers or at least don't use them on the plane. I, I, I've been into those, those, those Karen Dash crayons recently. That's my travel set. They're really good. Oh yeah. Those are great because you can draw with color, but they're not as horrible as say soft pastels that get all over the place. Although Lauren, doesn't that depend on the marker? Because I've brought Tombow dual brush pens and those were fine on the plane. Yeah, I mean, I was using paint markers, and I think that was the problem. Also, Copic ones explode, too, sometimes. Okay, Lauren, this is definitely for you. 80s music question. What about David Bowie songs? Oh, David Bowie. <laughs> you David said the Bowie. magic name. <laughs> David Bowie is the best, although... Yeah, I guess I guess eighties were pretty good. I like this. I I was a Ziggy Stardust, Tim White Duke era kind of Bowie, but Casey, who was who was on our team on Art Prof once upon a time, he really liked Berlin era Bowie, which was eighties, I think. So everybody's got their own Bowie. Labyrinth Bowie was good too. Kankana says. I always struggle with what tones to select to make the character blend with the background. Any tips, Jordan? Character blend with the background? Um, I think whenever you have that situation, uh, the character has to stand out. So usually people will make a character more saturated or they'll have the contrast be different. So maybe a very light colored character, maybe it's like wearing a white suit in a dark colored background or something. So whatever you do, I would say just have the background be more neutral and don't have it um be a stark contrast in itself like have it you know if the character's light have the background be dark or vice versa or um just keep it simple basically well jordan in your portrait right now is the background color random or did you plan for it to be that color uh well from the photo reference it actually kind of here I i'll just show you guys real quick this is the photo right here and so i kind of just took a basic color like a reddish pink and just paint over that so um i didn't put a ton of thought into it i might mess with it more but um it wasn't really anything that i thought about too too much 
because the background's not important for me. <laughs> you know, it's more <laughs> individual. So Venus is asking about submitting to be considered for a free portfolio critique on our YouTube channel. Do you have to be a soon-to-be BFA or MFA student to apply for the portfolio review? Nope. Anybody can apply. You don't even have to be applying to art school. You can be an independent working artist. And we really enjoy having a broad range of portfolios. So apply. It's no skin off your back <laughs> to apply because it's a win-win situation if you get it. If you don't, it's fine. You're in the same place you were before. Anna says, I want to bring colored pencils, but sharpening them is such a pain. I love the Karen Dash too. I know because then you got to deal with the pencil shavings and I just don't like colored pencil because it's so slow. I like markers because they glide really quickly across the surface. Oh, and actually, Anna, my favorite travel tool is a water brush because mm. if you're painting with watercolor and you don't have a water brush, you have to have a cup of water there. And the water brush is awesome because the water's in the brush. It's not the same, obviously, but I really like traveling with those. They're super convenient. All right. We have a question from Charismatics. What do you do if you think that what you're making looks like absolute dog crap? <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess we have all felt that sentiment at some point about our own artwork. <laughs> Yeah, actually, right before the stream, I came onto the stream, not in a bad mood, but definitely feeling, as Slepnir said, defeated because that I'm in my studio right now, if you haven't realized. I've been slogging to studio. I'm having a really hard time making any artwork right now, and I'm working on this painting behind me. If I get up, you can see it right there. And it's really big and I'm just, I, I'm in a part where it's, I've lost the head. I've just totally lost the head and I don't know what to do. I put on tons of oil paint and then I just wipe it off again. So I came in a studio and the painting looked like this. And even though I have wasted a lot of hours and a lot of money in oil paints on this painting, it looks almost exactly the same as it did when I came in at 2 p.m. What I do, charismatics, I try really hard when I'm working to not be paying that much attention to what I'm doing. Actually, a lot of the time I'm watching a movie at the same time because I'm just, I mean, a movie I've seen a million times, you know, like I'll put on Doctor Strange or something. And so I'm watching that and I'm drawing, but I'm not like judging myself because I'm <laughs> looking at Benedict every now and then. And I, I just think sometimes thinking too much is a problem for a lot of artists. Is that ever the case for you, Jordan? I am like the king of overthinking things and um, it, it plays into my art as well. Um, what I try to do now is I, I, I have to tell myself that my value as a person is not connected to the work that I do. Um, and I think that that's where a lot of people struggle because I'm like, I'm an artist, everything I'm supposed to, I do is supposed to be great. And uh, I think that we end up kind of hurting ourselves in the long run. So I try and have fun. I am similar to Clara. I listen to music, especially like Michael Jackson, if I'm doing a Michael Jackson. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, if, if, if the work is not looking good, make everything else around you something exciting and fun. Oh, that reminds me of another tip too. Jordan, I like that tip. But another thing I have that felt kind of related to yours about not feeling like it's about you as a person is also just trusting in your person and your time that you've spent as an artist where if it's coming out bad while you're practicing, you're practicing like Jordan does all the time to get better. But also if you've been doing art for forever, you can trust that your experience, you can work through anything. You can get through this bad period. You've got the skills. So if not make this piece look good eventually, you'll make another piece that looks good. So don't don't get too in the moment about it. You know what I like 
to think about when I get worried about making bad work. For a little while, my 12 year old was really into skateboarding. And so she was watching a lot of Tony Hawk videos online. If you don't know who he is, he's like the quintessential old school skateboarder. And if you watch Tony Hawk videos, 99% of all the videos is him crashing. So they'll show him crashing 30 times in a <laughs> row. And then in the last second of the video, he does it. You have to look at it that way because he's Tony Hawk. He's still crashing all the time. That doesn't stop. And what are you going to say? Oh, Tony Hawk, I can't believe you fell. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't nail that move every time. Like, that's ridiculous. And that's basically what you're saying to yourselves when you get upset that not every piece you make is a masterpiece. I guess it hurts. It hurts physically less to make a bad painting. Yes. See? Yeah. <laughs> Ginger Sal says, is there a reason you stopped doing the portfolio reviews live? I'm curious because I love when the person who made the portfolio is in the video too. We had such a headache scheduling those artists. It was driving me up the wall. People would flake out. People would show up literally a minute before the stream was supposed to start. And I couldn't take the stress anymore. It's a nice idea, but it was just too much headache for me to deal with. Because I know it looks like we just show up and it's so easy, but Lauren, that's not really true, right? No, I mean, we came on the stream, I came on the stream at 9.20, 9.15, and then we spent forever trying to get the lighting right and the lighting's still not right. So it takes a lot. There's a lot of background stuff. It looks like it's just, we're doing fun here. And this part is fun, but this is, the fun part is the stuff you see and all the not fun stuff is, in the, is behind the scenes. This is not the <laughs> color I want. Oh, go ahead. Sentient Charcoal says, I think I need to keep a picture of Tony Hawk crashing on my sketchbook to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea, actually. I really love that idea. You should do it. Please do it. it, it what? Think about this. Like when Tony Hawk crashes, does he cry about it? Does he get all upset and have a pity party for a week? No way. He'd never get anything done. He's got to have cried sometimes. Really? You think he's still oh, alive? No. Maybe when he's like in pain. Um, something that reminds me of is like those guys who do parkour, like on Instagram, <laughs> yeah. and TikTok and stuff. Like you see them trying to jump over a ramp. Like they do it like 20 or 30 or 50 times in order to get it right. And when I get that one, it's that successful feeling that Claire was talking about. Yeah, then it goes viral and then it's amazing. You know what I think it is? The, the artist equivalent of the way people use Instagram, it would be if they were Tony Hawk and they only posted reels of them nailing every single run. That's what it would be like. Good analogy, actually. It really is. This is not Although, the right color. I like this comment from Jazz, who says the crashes are the best part. Now, Jordan, I know a lot of artists do not show behind the scenes. They don't show the crummy thumbnails and the fails. But people do like seeing that part of the artistic process. Why do you think that is? I think because it helps people see that we're human, just like everyone else. Um, it's... It, you know, actually, this reminds me of a Michael Jackson interview I saw. <laughs> uh, uh, Oprah was at his house and she asked him to do like some dance moves. And he gets up and he's like, well, actually, I'm a little bit rusty. And then he goes out and does his thing. And we're all looking at him like, are you crazy, bro? Like, what do you mean rusty? Like, you just freaking did all this stuff. But, you know, and to, for someone we don't fully understand, like the dance world, it doesn't make sense to us. But in the art world, 
you know, it, I think it's so much more helpful to see like, yeah, I make mistakes. Yeah. I have issues. I have off days and admitting that is really empowering for someone who's trying to learn. I think. It reminds me of the trend right now on TikTok and reels with the voice. that's like, Oh, hi, just checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. <laughs> <sighs> I yeah. love watching this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have two of our staff, Lauren and Jordan, are both on TikTok. And HT Poke Pack wants to know any TikTok artist growth hacks. Jordan, what have you noticed with your TikTok? Uh, <laughs> um... I mean, mine hasn't blown up or anything quite yet, but I think probably the biggest thing is um, being off, being authentic and posting consistent, consi consistently. Um, those are the two things I've seen that have really taken people forward, even if their work isn't, um, you know, the ideal or where they want it to be. They can still get a lot of growth from doing that. Um, it's actually kind of amazing how far people get. Um, despite skill level in anything. Like there's some videos I'm like, how do you have this many followers and literally all, or this many views and literally all you did was like shake your head a couple of times. <laughs> you know, I, I don't fully understand it, but you know, it is what it is. But people who have skill, people who have talent in the art world, I think they're all going to go far eventually. Lauren, what have you observed in your TikTok? Well, I have posted like three videos one of them, I guess, went semi-viral, and I don't know why, but I just, I think Jordan is right about being authentic or just not being afraid to, it's it's okay if you're just nerding out. I've nerded out about pigeons. I made a video of me making a painting of a pigeon, and people really liked that for some reason. And I wanted to do another video of me making a painting, but... It's a little bit, I, I don't know. I think you need a balance of time between doing the TikTok and actually doing your practice. Like for me, editing the videos just takes a lot of time and I kind of have so little time for painting as it is that I'm sorry, I'm old. I'm just going to stick to posting pictures for now on Instagram. <laughs> Lauren, people want to know what your TikTok handle is. Oh, I think it's the Dark Goose Arts. Okay, I'll put that in. Yeah. Or dark, dark Goose Arts? Yeah, the Dark Goose Arts. I'll check it out right now. Um, oh, it's making a loud noise. Help. Yeah, the Dark Goose Arts. I could talk about TikTok forever because I've learned a lot over the past couple months, but the best tip I can give you, you got one second to hook people. I know there's this statistic, oh, you have to convince people to keep watching. You've got seven seconds. I'm like, no, you got one second on TikTok. <laughs> if you don't hook them in one second, forget it. Usually what I do is I try to address some problem or need something that somebody's asked me, and then I'll say, here is how I would solve that. And then I give the advice. The other thing is most TikTok videos are about 15 seconds. Technically, you can make them a minute, but the ones that get better traction are shorter. So I would do that and then just make a ton of terrible videos. That's what I did. I made so many and I'm just starting to feel like I sort of get what's going on. Yeah, there's really not much, uh, what's the word? If you fail, there's nothing, there's, you don't really lose anything except your time because yeah. nobody sees the video. Nobody's going to yell at you, hopefully. So <laughs> you just make another video. And you can do a sweep later when you have videos that are so cringy, you can't take it. You can get rid of them <laughs> or leave them for your followings entertainment, which is what I'm doing. <laughs> you see, I, I suffer. I'm suffering my, my cringiness 
for your benefit. This is what we do. Thanks, Clara. <laughs> Alexander McElry says, used to watch your videos. I got into an accident last year, which resulted in a head injury and I lost most of my memory. How do I learn to be creative and draw again? Oh, wow, Alexander, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you're here and maybe we can give you some tips. Jordan, how would you start that up? Because that, that's a lot to come back from. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm sorry that you had to, that, that you had to experience that. Um, I would say anytime an artist is trying to grow, I think fundamentals is always the best. Um, you know, and, and the professional artists that I really appreciate, they always go back to that. So that's perspective, anatomy, um, basic shapes, color theory, um, proportion, all those different things that we kind of take for granted as we get further along those are all essential. And so it, it's like in basketball, it's like the importance of a layup, you know, that's it's fundamental. You gotta learn how to do a layup or dribble the ball. Yeah, I think taking very small steps, not jumping right into it again, just be easy on yourself. If you're having, if you are working on the conceptualizing portion of making a piece, we have some guidance on how to get into brainstorming and develop better brainstorming habits, which I, that could be a helpful framework, like a, a place to start. But I agree with Jordan, just going back to the real basics and, and focusing on just one thing if you can, whatever that one thing is, if it's just doing a blind contour, like making your hand move while you look at something, that's what you do. If it's you're doing color fields and you're just putting two colors together because that's what you can focus on, that is also working on something. So yeah, um, I, I, I think it can also be really good just uh, like getting back into the practice can be really healing as well. So I, I hope that you find uh, peace and healing in that. I would recommend get a small sketchbook. Don't try to make finished work. I think sometimes that is a lot of pressure for people. And if you just say, I'm just going to work in my sketchbook and I'm not going to stress about making epic paintings, that's not necessary. I think a simple sketchbook practice would be great. Sentient Charcoal says, I'm going very slowly in the 2500 challenge, but my hands and legs, et cetera, are going through a dip in quality. So I self high five for getting out some quote, bad drawings. What do you think about that, Jordan? That is exactly what the 2500 challenge is for. Um, <laughs> like the whole purpose, many of you guys may not realize it, but the reason the numbers are so high to, to accomplish is because it forces you to get out those bad drawings. You know, um, you might feel good after 10, be like, oh, I was I was killing these. Look at all this. I'm, I'm a monster at this. And then you get the next 20 and they just, you know, suddenly every foot has seven toes, you know, and so, <laughs> <laughs> it's different. Right. Um, the I'm if I'm remembering the quote properly, it's uh, Chuck Jones once said, everyone has 10,000 bad drawings in them. You do the 2500. <laughs> you will be a quarter of the way through all those bad drawings. So. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so good. Oh, I need to go through all my bad drawings. Need to burn them out of me. Anna's asking, is there a reason you should be on TikTok specifically as opposed to just being on Instagram? Too many social media sites overwhelms me. Oh, trust me, you're not the only one. <laughs> I really resisted going on to TikTok for a long time because I had the exact same reaction. I, I just don't have the headspace for another site. But you know something? For me, here's the difference. TikTok is really good at sending you out to people who know nothing about you. Whereas on Instagram, you really do have to have a following to get anything. But then it's hard because you got to have a following. On TikTok, you could have two posts on your TikTok and one could totally blow up. And that I have not seen happen on Instagram. So 
it's almost like TikTok levels the playing field a little bit because I do find that Instagram, the people who have tons and tons of followers, they're the ones that perform well and everybody else is just really frustrated. But TikTok makes it actually possible for you. Because like Lauren, you had that one video that performed really well on TikTok and you got all these new people who had never seen your work before. Yeah, it was it was weird. And I it went so fast, I didn't really know how to capitalize on it. People were like, Oh, I want this, where can I go to find this? And I, so there's you have to also, I guess, think about your pacing too. can you handle having that amount of eyes at once? I think Instagram is maybe a little bit more, it's frustrating, but the pacing is easier on me. But certainly if you, yeah, if you are starting out and you don't have a following, you want a lot of people see your stuff, I think TikTok is the way to go. And reels also on Instagram are also the way to go. The algorithm on it seems a bit different. So that's something to keep in mind. I guess for me, TikTok is where I saw very visible results because we had one video that got, I think, 100,000 views, something like that. And in that one day, we gained something like 1,000 new subs on YouTube. That has never happened on anything else. And all these people are finding us on TikTok now. So I feel like for us, it's worth it. But the thing is, our audience is very broad. I mean, we have people who are 12 that use our stuff. We have people that are in their 80s who use our stuff. And if you're somebody who's not trying to reach a younger audience, TikTok might not be worth it for you. And so think about who your audience is, who you're trying to reach. It may not be worth your time at all. Well, Jordan, here's a question for you. Jazz says, my figure drawing instructor for a solid year told me my heads are too big and my legs are too short. Any tips? That's because hilarious. that that can be frustrating. <laughs> That's hilarious because I have the exact same problem. Uh, <laughs> whenever I draw a head, I always well, I draw it too small usually. I usually draw my heads too small to this day. And then when I was first figure drawing, my legs were like three times longer than they needed to be. Um, and what I did to when I do to, to kind of fix that is when I know I'm running in, into that phase in the drawing where I'm approaching that, I have to mentally like think like okay don't draw the head too small don't draw the head too small and i focus That's on what i do for like <laughs> one seconds while i figure that out and then the rest i'm like okay i'm good i'm good and then when i get to the legs i'm like okay don't draw them too big don't draw them too big. and then i draw it out and it, it usually goes like that um, I'm much faster now, so those conversations tend to be a little shorter, but <laughs> that's that's kind of how I approach it. Wow, I love that. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta Jess, do sometimes. I think it's about identifying what is your tendency, because I'm the same way. If I don't think about it deliberately, I will always draw the legs too short. I've been doing this for years and years, and that's just a habit that I will just default to if I don't think about it. So when I sit down, because I know this about myself and I draw the figure, I say, don't draw them too short. You know, you always draw them too short. Don't do that. Make them longer <laughs> than you think they should be. They'll be just about right. So you just have to know yourself. What are your habits as an artist? I know my habits. I, I take... I start with five colors and then I end up with a hundred colors. So <laughs> that's not bad. No, I, I get, I get the rainbow vomit. I mean, my paintings behind me are very rainbowy. So I really have to both plan. I have to do a lot of planning before I put things on the canvas. I really front load my work. And then I also start with a smaller palette than I could ever possibly use. And I tend to stick with things that are analogous or just very simple palettes because I know that I will complicate it on my own as I go. So that that's like this painting right here. I had two colors and now it's five colors. And I'm hoping that I can keep it under 10. 
Sounds like we're all preempting our artistic habits to make mm -hmm. sure we don't go in overdrive. And sometimes that takes time to figure out what your habits are. But I also think it's fine if that happens. I do that with painting where sometimes I'm like, there you are using Alyssa and Crimson again. Oh, like, yeah. Yes, I know it's a crutch. Can't help it. <laughs> oh, Alyssa and Crimson specifically. I would use that too all the time. Everything. And, <laughs> oh, everything. And, and Sam was like, I was like, I can't, I don't understand why my paintings are not coming out good. And Sim's like, you use a lizard and crimson in every single painting and you never switch it up. And I got mad at him about it. I was like, no, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> and then the next painting, I grabbed a lizard and crimson and just, just not even thinking about it. I, I took it and I put it on. I was like, ah, oh, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> was he there to like rub it in your face too? No, no, he doesn't oh, do that. He's, he's okay. nice, unlike <laughs> some of us who would be extremely tempted. <laughs> Everybody, I hope you will join Lauren and Jordan in the Art Prof Discord. They will be in the post live streams channel and share your work that you made during the session. The invite link is in the YouTube video description below. And come hang with us because it's like 24 seven art nerd party. We love it in there and we hope you will come hang out with us. And we want to give a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters who really are keeping us alive. The lights are on because of all of you who support us on Patreon, but we got some work to do. I'm really sad because we went down so much and we were at 4,000 for about two months. And I was like, okay, we're on the way. We're going to get there. And now I'm just crying. <laughs> so if you can support us and i know many people don't have that ability but it all adds up and we don't want to ever set up a paywall but art prof is expensive to run we have staff to pay we have expenses and platforms to pay for none of that is cheap and we need to keep that going so we would greatly appreciate your support on that everybody thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time Bye. Bye.